Lord be with you. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Tonight we pray Vespers, page 229, our opening hymn, 426. service book. After the psalm tone, we will chant in unison, Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, 
O Lord of hosts, my soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and sheep. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hymn 823. Please be seated.
reading from Isaiah, chapter 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from Hebrews, chapter 4. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the eighth chapter. When a great crowd was gathering and people from town after town came to Jesus, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell among the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away, because it had no moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil, and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of testing fall away. As for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Unite my heart to fear your name, that I may walk in your truth. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my heart. In the name of Jesus, amen. 
God's people missed their rest in the promised land because of their unbelief. This is a warning to us. God calls upon us to trust Him and to enter into the rest that He has enjoyed since He finished His creation. Some scholars believe that the epistle to the Hebrews is actually the sermon to the Hebrews. We don't know for sure who wrote it or preached it. Some say Paul, some say others. But we have the best chance of understanding tonight's epistle lesson from Hebrews chapter 4 if we hear a little bit more of this sermon. There remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. What does it look like? It looks like a sower rejoicing over a hundredfold growing in good soil. It looks like St. Paul boasting all the more gladly of his weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon him. It looks like the joy of the people of God nourished by the word as explained in Isaiah chapter 55. But it also looks like this, beginning with chapter 3, verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years. This is what happened in Exodus 17 and after. This is what the end of Psalm 95, known as the Venite at Matins, is talking about. Therefore I was provoked with that generation and said, They always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. The Lord wants his people to have his rest. So the preacher says this, Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. This is the clue to how we receive the Sabbath rest of God. It is in Christ alone. Verse 15, as it is said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? The preacher tells us. Was it not all those who left Egypt left by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned? That's the problem, isn't it? One of their sins was idolatry. And another of their sins was idolatry. We could go all the way down the list, but if you break any of the commandments, you have something else or someone else as your God. Was it not with those who sinned whose bodies fell in the wilderness over 40 years? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. The promised land was to be a land of rest for them. But it was not after they sent the spies and they were afraid. They were unable to enter the Sabbath rest of God because they didn't trust Him. How horrific is that? We've reached chapter 4. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, 
Let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them. The Old Testament is not just law, and the New Testament is not only gospel. The good news is found in both Testaments, for Christ is found in both Testaments. Good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest, as he has said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. We're talking creation week, the six days plus the day of rest that gives us our seven-day week. For he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way. One of the verses that makes scholars think this is a sermon and not an epistle. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this passage he said, They shall not enter my rest. We can hear the judgment, the law of the Lord, proclaimed to our hearts by the Holy Spirit through this preacher and this text, Because we keep hearing, they shall not enter my rest. We've had the counterexample of the people in the wilderness. We also need to hear the good news that is for us. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, that's us, Christians, the church, And those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience. Again, he appoints a certain day, today. Isn't that amazing? Now is the day of salvation. Today, if you are hearing my voice, live or in recording days from now, today is the day of salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord saying through David so long afterward in the words already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. We're almost to the official text, but verse 8 is fascinating to this preacher. If Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. Who's Joshua? He's the prophet that succeeded Moses, but not the prophet that Moses predicts in Deuteronomy chapter 18. That prophet, Jesus, shares a name with Moses' successor. Consider, if you will, maybe you've heard this, maybe not. Joshua can be pronounced in the Hebrew, Yehoshua, or Yeshua, said in the Greek, Jesus, in the English, Jesus. Our Lord Jesus Christ shares a name in common with Joshua. Just as there are many Johns and many Josephs and many Marys, there is the Joshua of the Old Testament and the New Testament Joshua, our Lord Jesus And in him, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. That is you. For whoever has entered into God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Remember that day when you finally checked off everything on your to-do list? Those days are rare, aren't they? Imagine the joy of taking rest after those labors. No, not as important as the Lord's creation days. But it gives us a picture of what it means to enjoy the Sabbath rest the Lord gives in Christ to you, the people of God. But consider also, what this means. 
We rest from our works in another way. We rest from resting upon our laurels and our works in order to earn or buy our way into heaven. No, Jesus' works on the cross earned all of that. We wish to remain in Christ, in His rest, like the peace that surpasses all understanding, so does this Sabbath rest of the people of God that God has designed for you. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience, the grumbling, the complaining, the Massa and Meribah of Exodus 17 and Psalm 95. For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning all the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It's that sword that's so sharp, even better than the knives and things they sell on TV to cut your vegetables, or a pop can. The Lord knows you by His Spirit better than you know yourself. By His Spirit and the preaching of the law, He calls you to repentance. By the preaching of the gospel and the work of His Spirit, blowing where and when He wills, He calls you to faith. He wants to strengthen your faith. And if you have been like those in the rebellion in the wilderness, putting the Lord and His servants to the test. Repent. The Lord can restore your faith and bring you home. No creature is hidden from His sight. He is the Good Shepherd, after all. But all are naked and exposed to the eyes of Him to whom we must give account. And who is that? It is Jesus Christ, the Judge, coming on the last day at the end of time. But he has other vocations too. He is the one who suffered capital punishment on the cross as your substitute. And he is your advocate before the Father, your attorney. So that when the Lord Jesus returns, he knows you because he has given you The Sabbath rest He gives to the people of God. Whoever has entered God's rest in Christ has true rest. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Magnificat is the canticle appointed for Vespers. Page 231. Please stand. Let my prayer rise before you as incense And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice My soul magnifies the Lord And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior For He has regarded the loneliness of his and maiden. For behold, from this day, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things to me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, 
and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, Mercifully grant that by your power we may be defended against all adversity. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord of the harvest, we give you thanks for all of your tender mercies. Implant in us your holy word, that in good and honest hearts we may keep him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, send forth laborers into your harvest, that we may be preserved in the pure teaching of your saving word, whereby faith toward you is strengthened, charity increased in us toward all, and your kingdom extended in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, be with all who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity, especially those who are suffering for your name and truth. We pray especially for all who are recovering, and also for Geraldine, Jacole, Carol, Lucas, David, George, Pauline, Kathy, Alistair, Nancy, Evelyn, Carolyn, and Patricia. Grant comfort, O God, with your Holy Spirit, that they may receive and acknowledge their afflictions as the manifestation of your fatherly will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit 
be with you all.